responders, whether they are hurt on or off the job, find in that in their time of need, there are little, if any, resources out there to really help them get their lives back on track. One local paramedic knows all too well, and her story of tragedy is now being used to help others. WMBF's Caitlin Stansel tells us about an organization created to serve those who put their lives on the line to serve us. Caitlin. Well, Julie, the newly founded organization is called Holding the Line. It's a 501c3 and depends on community dollars to help first responders in need. And their first recipient is one that you may recognize, a tragic ambulance crash changing her life forever. When the people that help you need help, we want somewhere we can turn to also. Holding the Line was born out of Tessie Smith's own pain. We had nowhere to turn other than our community and the people that I worked with and, you know, family. Smith said that through her experience, she discovered that the resources available for first responders are limited. When it came to trying to make my house wheelchair compatible, there's nothing out there for EMS people, fire department, any of that, that comes in and helps you do that. And that's when my family and I sat down and we're like, something's got to be done. Insurance and workers' compensation can only go so far. And this organization would also help first responders who are hurt while they're not on the clock. It's not a local problem, it's nationwide. Because we tried to find even you know, things out there further that might could help, would help, and there's nothing there. So that's why we are expanding because to put something there for everybody and not limiting, you know, to Florence or to South Carolina even. Smith has spent her life giving back to others and holding the line will become her hands and heart to continue what she loves to do. I can't physically go and help people now, so this gives me a way to still do what I enjoy doing. Let me tell you about holding the line. The organization was just launched last week, and while its first mission is to help build a wheelchair-accessible home for Smith, its future is only limited by the community dollars that help fund its projects. It makes me feel really good. It's also a little scary to say, is it going to make it? You know, and that's all we can do is try. If we help one family, that's one family who didn't have to do it on their own. For more on how you can help, go to our website, WMBFnews.com. Right now, there's a campaign underway to buy individual pieces of Smith's new home, a single brick or a window or even the kitchen sink. But organizers say really any donation is appreciated. For WMBF News, I'm Caitlin Stansel.